Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Hey, hey. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. When my life lay down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness.
let's give Minister Medina another hand for those two wonderful selections. We're going to have an A selection by no, Ma Mariah. Come on, come to us in your own way.
Lord, I know you spared my life. Lord, I know you spared my life. You watched in my grave. Lord, I know you spared my life. Jesus, you been my mother. And Lord, you been my father too. church. Amen. Where I serve as the pastor. Amen. That's King Cotton Baptist Church. So glad to be here with my friend and brother. Amen. Bishop Sorrell and Lady Sorrell and to the host of God's pastors and first ladies. Amen. Amen. I'm looking. I'm looking for the Prettiest first lady in town. Amen. She's sitting behind the big Baptist hats. Amen. To the first lady of King Solomon Baptist Church. Honey, just wave your hand. Amen. Amen. I, that way I ain't got to start no fighting up in here. If somebody go flirting with the wrong woman, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, Pastor? We don't want to have to start nothing up in here. Amen. God is good. Amen. I, Sister Duncan here, I was looking. Is our first lady emeritus here? Amen. Our wonderful, beautiful first lady emeritus, Sister Duncan. Amen. 
Amen. And to our other readings, yes, yes. Bishop Jerry Serena Amen. and Lady Elect, Sister Serena, yes. may God ever bless you. Amen. I see a couple of aunties out here. Amen. I see them out here. Amen. Got back big Baptist hats on and some hiding over there in the corner. God is good. Amen. Amen. I, I remember when I first met him, they took me, Pastor, to one of their apartments and gave me an interview. To see if I was qualified to, to marry their niece. I said, hey. Amen. I said, well. I guess I passed the interview. <laughs> I got the job of being a husband, so I guess I, I passed the interview. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because everybody in her family tall, I guess they said, what's well, she bring this little shorty over here for? <laughs> Amen. I'm just happy, glad to be here. We've enjoyed some good singing. Some good worshiping this evening. Amen. But no service complete without the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. To the host of God's preachers, amen. I'm like this preacher over here. I ain't going to be for you too long because I smell greens too. I, I didn't smell the cornbread, but I know it can't be too far away. Yeah, Lord. Amen. Don't, don't, don't y'all bother with me. I just love and enjoy church. Amen. I don't think church, I think church ought to be a place you enjoy coming. Am I right about it? Amen. He gonna mess around and start something. Yeah. Amen. Let us pray. Most dear gracious Father, we thank you for our opportunity to proclaim your gospel. We pray that your word will come cutting and your word will come healing. Lord, we pray that you will speak through your servant and to him. Lord, we pray that there be some sinner among us this evening. Lord, that they would hear your word and accept your Savior and Lord of their lives. Lord, if somebody's a little down and out, that your word will encourage them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and thank God. Acts 7, chapter 46, verse. Our theme for the night, scripture, Acts 7 and 46, it says, Who found favor before God? and desire to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob. We want to talk this evening about a pastor who appreciates God's favor. Amen. A pastor that appreciates, who appreciates God's favor. You know, we had that time change Amen. They already caught me. They think they caught me catnapping, but I was meditating. I seen them. I seen them family members. They think I was asleep. I wasn't asleep. It was too good a church going on to go to sleep. But I tell you what, if y'all don't talk back to me, I'll go to sleep. He know what I mean. Amen. A pastor who appreciates God's favor. We thank God for a pastor like Bishop Sorrell. Uh, when you got favor with God, 
you don't mind sharing your favor. The Bible declares a friend is one stick closer than a brother. Uh, Bishop Sherell has stuck closer to me than a brother. He been right there by my side ever since about eight months ago when they called me the pastor. King Solomon, he's been a true friend and a true brother. Uh, he labored with me down at the church at night trying to correct some things and fix some things up. And he charged a good price. He charged the right price. He said, don't worry about it, brother. I love you. I say, big brother, you got the right price. Amen. We live in a society where everybody want to get paid to do something for God. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody got to get paid. Some preachers won't show up if you don't pay. Musicians go to the highest bidder. Uh, leave it alone, preacher. Huh. Singers don't want to sing. Directors don't want to direct. Well, I come to tell you, serving God will pay off. Uh, I'm getting off strip already. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You, you, you know, serving God will pay off. It, it, everybody count dollars and cents. But what about the favor of God? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he wake you up this morning? Yeah. Didn't he start you on your way? Yeah. Didn't he give you a reason out of health and strength? Yeah. Matter of fact, didn't he wake up all your children this morning? Yeah. Ain't nobody got a funeral schedule for their child this morning. Somebody give God some glory. I think about the goodness of God and his favor. Huh? I got six children. Ain't none of them locked up. Huh? Ain't none of them homeless. All of them got their own place. God been good to me. Huh? God done showed me some favor. Hmm. And I tell you something, that's why I don't understand how folks come to church so quiet. When a person discovers they have a favor of God in their life, they can't help but worship and praise Him. His holy name. Praise His holy name. When you truly learn from the bottom of your heart God's favor in your life, you can't help but dedicate your life to Christ. Mm. And dedication not always reflected on what's on the outside of a person, but what's on the inside of a person's heart. David's exterior didn't reflect that he was a strong and mighty warrior for God. For the Bible said he was a runt. He was a little of all his brothers. Huh? Huh? But when everybody else was scared, there was something else deep down in David. I tell you something, there's something about a short fella, he ain't scared. Huh. I remember when I was a little boy, say I ain't always been the same. It was a guy in the neighborhood, everybody was scared of him. Y'all know we used to play pinball back in the day. I waited till he came in the hamburger stand. I couldn't reach his chin, so I waited till he came in there, I eased up. The guy on top of the pinball machine. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all used to watch harassing. I came down like Superfly Snooker. Yeah. 
Now everybody in the neighborhood scared of this little fella. But, but God was in the interior of David. Yeah. When everybody else was scared of Goliath, yeah. Tom, he was too big. Yeah. When they tried to give him their weapons of war, David said, no, no, that ain't going to work for me. I got to use what I know is being proven. Yeah. And I come by to tell you, you ought to try what's been proven in your life. Yeah. Stop trying all these new gimmicks. Too many pastors trying something new, trying this new, trying something new. What's wrong with this old school? Standing on the Holy Ghost of God, standing on His Word, not starting from the right to the left, but stand focused on the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Ain't no new gimmicks. I ain't got no new gimmicks for you. The church stood on tithes and often years ago. And it's still standing on tides and off. Huh? I ain't got no Holy Ghost handkerchief to sell you for $20. Preacher. Yeah. Mm. People want to do everything instead of standing on the word of God and standing on the anointing power of the true and living God. Trying to get through this manuscript. But you are rushing me here this evening. On the exterior, David didn't look like a true servant of God. But God, in Acts 13 and 22, said David was a man out of his own home. Everybody looking for the perfect pastor. Everybody looking for a perfect preacher. David was a man after own God's own heart, but he was a murderer, adulterous. Huh? David was all messed up. But God said he was a man after his own heart. So when a person discovers that you have the favor of God, and that favor chose you to be redeemed, you can't help but serve him. Then let me tell you something. Holy Saint John, God gave you favor. God custom designed your pastor. Yes, for you. He knew he was a man that loved him and appreciated his favor. Look, look, look what God said about your pastor. Y'all mighty quiet up in here. Where that fire choir went? Make some noise. I'm talking about your pastor. I ain't talking about my pastor. I'm talking about your pastor. Hmm. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I named you a prophet unto the nation. I told you I ain't got nothing new. I'm just an old school Baptist preacher standing on the word. Huh? Huh? Before his, even his parents knew. Who, that it was going to be a Jerry Sheree. Yes, God already had sanctified him to be the pastor of the Holy St. John Baptist Church. Yeah. Set him aside for the pastor, his people. Even before he knew him, God set him aside. That's why I tell everybody, uh, Pastor Ray, I was born for this. Before I even got here, Sorrel, even before we got here, before you even got here, Pastor, you were born for this. You didn't get to become Pastor when they called you. You were Pastor when you were born. You were Pastor when you were sinning. When you weren't acting right. You were still Pastor, you just didn't know. Huh? Huh. When I got kicked out of them four schools, I didn't know I was going to be pastor, but I was still pastor. I knew, God knew what he was going to do with me, but I didn't know. Even before Pastor Rell knew himself, God set him aside. Look what he, he said, I ordained thee. In other words, I 
I anointed thee for this purpose. Yeah. I, I, and Pastor Sherey, I quickly discovered Come on, it takes a special anointing yeah. to be God's pastor. Yeah. See, it's easy when you're walking on the sideline. Yeah, I used to tell folks I sleep all night. But now I toss and turn all night. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Because God's anointing is, is dealing with me in a different way. Huh? It's easy, it's easy. Like I want somebody to know it's easy when you look. And, and, and you're looking on the outside and you say, Pastor, it's easy. I'll come by the church. It ain't that easy. Huh? Huh? My, 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 my hat and turned a little gray. The fruit strings I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can't I can't say pastor made me ball, but I've been bald since I was 19 years old, so. <laughs> For this assignment, you know, many are called. But through our children. God got a lot of preachers he called. But he only chose the fruit to be pastors and shepherd of his own flock. Bishop Sorrell was chosen by God to lead the flock of God. In this spiritual warfare that we live in, yeah. in times when the church yeah. is under constant attack yeah. from the devil and his angels, right. not only from the exterior, uh -huh. y'all ain't gonna like this, Preacher. but from the interior. Yeah. Yeah. Don't ever think yeah. that the devil don't come to church, yes, sir. and some of y'all bring him with you. Don't y'all throw nothing at me. Yeah. Some of y'all coming to do. Pastor ain't done nothing to you, but you're already mad. Some of y'all coming to do. Mad at God. I ain't gonna pray for this bone. Huh? Choir members don't want to sing. Ushers, grouchy, you sit over there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the devil come to church. Look what he did in Job. <laughs> Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before God. And Satan came also among them to present himself before God. And God asked him, of course, Satan, where are you coming from? Going to and fro. Seeking whom I may devour. See, I'm telling you something. When you're walking in your anointing, you got to be aware of the signs of the devil and don't feed into it. Uh, some folks cussing you out, yet let them cuss. The Bible says a kind word. Turns away wrath. I wish I had some Bible readers in here with me. Hmm. Cause I, I know I, I, I was just like some of y'all. If you cuss me, I'll cuss you. And then this preacher said, used to. Well, I ain't going to say all that, Doc. Uh, I try to control myself. But I tell you, if you rub me too far the wrong way, the devil will get in the preacher too. I know, I know, I know, I know. I tell folks this all the time. And when you get ready, pastor, and you, and you get on somebody's case, they say, I thought you was a preacher. All right. Well, you know I was a preacher for you came messing with me. That's right, the first thing they say. They ain't did all kind of wrong to you. Everything they did to you, everything under the sun to you, but the first time you say something back, they say he's supposed to be a preacher. Huh? First thing, first thing out of their mouth. First thing they say, he or she supposed to be a Christian. They knew, they, was, they knew you was a Christian before they came messing with you. Now, now, now. Don't come over here lying and say the pastor gave you permission to cut somebody out. I ain't saying all that now. I ain't saying all that. 
Huh? Well, I'm just letting you know that Satan not only comes to church, but sometimes he comes with you. Watch what Paul say. In me the well of no good thing. And sometimes he was by himself. Huh? You ever just woke up on the wrong side of the bed? Ain't nobody did nothing wrong to you. You just woke up in the morning and made up your mind that you was going to be mad that day. You just made up your mind. Ain't nothing changed from the time you lay down to the time you get up. Huh? Some of these husbands will testify. Some of these husbands, I can't testify to this one. I'm gonna fix it up for myself. <laughs> Sometimes these wives wake up on the wrong side of the bed. But not mine, not mine, Doc. I ain't trying to start nothing. Uh, I ain't ate dinner yet. I, I'm going to be cool. Uh, 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 if you're not careful, you allow Satan to use you to declare war against your pastor. Uh, a lot of folks come to church declare war against the man of God. Against the pastor. You, you get mad. Pastor just can't do nothing right. And I, I quickly discovered everybody know what the pastor is supposed to do. Everybody. Not except the pastor. Huh? But as I checked in the scripture, the anointing flows down. And goes out. It don't come back up. All I'm saying is, when God got ready to talk to the children of Israel, he didn't talk to them. He talked to Moses. Huh? When he get ready to talk to the Holy Saint John, he ain't going to talk to you. He going to talk to Bishop Jerry Sorrell. He know who he called. He know he assigned. He know who was responsible for everything that go on between the wall. God know who he called. I can preach like this, but I'm going home. Hmm. But I can tell you, stop fighting against your pastor. The Bible says, bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you. Hmm. Let your pastor be pastor. If he acting up, God will straighten him out. God say, those I love, I chase. And I come to tell you, everybody, God used to chase him, chasing Israel. He came back and got him himself. So if God used you to chastise Pastor Sorrell, he gonna come back and get you later. Go check the scripture for yourself. Mm. I told you I'm just an old school preacher. Hmm. But you, but you got, but you got to be careful. But I tell you something: when you find a pastor that has discovered the favor of God in his life and will love you in spite of you, because he want to walk in God's favor, therefore he let the Holy Spirit of God lead him. Huh? There's too many people don't want to talk about the Holy Ghost. Don't want to talk about the power of the Holy Ghost. But if the pastor don't have the Holy Ghost, he ain't qualified. It's the anointing of God that makes the difference. It's the Holy Ghost that makes the difference. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you just sound and breath. You ain't nothing but an honor to be God's mouthpiece. You got to have the Holy Ghost. That's why I got problems with these preachers that sit around in pulpits and don't open their mouth, don't say nothing. How you gonna say you got the Holy Ghost and you never move? And Jeremiah said like fire. Shut up in my bones. Mm -hmm. I'm 
I'm almost done. Huh? He'll walk in his way. Huh? Look, look what he says in Psalms 119. With my whole heart have I sought the Lord and met not my wonder from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. See, the pastor got to meditate in the word both day and night. Huh? While you laying up there sleeping, your pastor rolling and tossing and turning, thinking about the word and, and praying for you. My wife be over there here. Lord have mercy. And I'm over there tossing and turning. And she over there sleeping good. And sometimes I, I like to wake her up. But I'll tell you something. Don't wake my wife early in the morning. She's sweeter than a honeycomb after 8 o'clock. But Lord have mercy. I'm going to leave it alone, I tell you. I'm going to leave it alone. I wake up early in there, she act like my mama. And them Jones girls is tough. Hey, Amen. Uh, he said, oh, I forgot time, an hour ahead. I thought she had two hours to go. He said, my son, Proverbs, forget not my law. Let thy heart keep my commandment for length of days and long life. And peace shall be added unto. Let thy mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon thy heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. I tell you something. That's why you ought to walk close with your pastor. Because if he walking in favor. Yes, sir. Sooner or later, some favor going to rub off on you. Yeah. Somebody missed that. But you ought to walk close with him. Because if he walking in favor, sooner or later, the favor going to rub off on you. If God blessing you, blessing him, sooner or later, some of his blessings going to roll off on you. Huh? I thank God that I learned a long time ago how to walk close to my pastor. Hmm. We were like Batman and Robin for almost 38 years. And I, and I tell you something, when I got mad at the bishop, he didn't even know. Sometimes he rubbed me so mad I'd be so hot at him. And he just didn't know it, Sister Duncan. But I love my pastor. Huh? Because sometimes, you know, a pastor got to tell you what you don't like. See? That's right. What you don't want to hear. See? Y'all young. I'm climbing on up the mountain a little bit now. Bishop. But I remember when it started raining. And it got cold. Mama put some nasty stuff on the spoon. Yes, sir. <laughs> the first person got a nose started running. The new generation don't know nothing about that. Mama put that cold little oil on that spoon. And everybody had to line up and get a little taste of it. Yes, huh? Yes. If you're hard-headed like me, sometimes you don't want to swallow it. Mama, you know, you... <laughs> It up the first time. The next time mama take that spoon, she put it in your mouth. Hold your head back. And it gone down. See, sometimes you got to get right back and take it. It might not taste good to you. See, I tell you, if a pastor's giving you every word that make you feel good all the time, you need to get away from him. Because the word ought to cut you sometimes. The word ought to chastise you sometimes. The word ought to make you mad sometimes. 
huh? the word ought to rub you the wrong way sometimes. Because you ain't always walking in the word. I know some of y'all think you holding it in thy, but everybody ain't here holding it in thy. Some folks slip and slide sometimes. Uh, look here. Then Bishop, I'm on my way now. I would say, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, Bishop. And he shall direct your path. See, every now and then, uh, you got to get self out of the way. Every, every, every now and then. I'm going to try to wake y'all up a little bit. Y'all act like y'all going to sleep on me. But I come back to tell you, oh my way, if you're walking in the favor of God, God got blessings with your name on it. And Christ, I'm glad you're walking in the favor of God. As long as the bishop walking in favor, the third lady getting favor. And as long as they're walking in favor, Holy Saint favor. I ask somebody to tell you, every church representative in here, if your pastor is walking in favor, you ought to walk with him. You ought to walk in the power of the true and living God. I ask somebody to tell you, by the power of the Holy Ghost, that God got us walking in favor. Holy St. John is the best as it is because your pastor is walking in favor. Is I'm blessed and highly favored. I come by to tell you, I try God and see it for myself. And I'm blessed and highly favored. When other folks fall down with sickness, God pick me up. Is there anybody in here that needs God to heal your body? God to deliver you. Is there anybody in here you can take it and see that the Lord is good when you walk in favor, Bishop? When you walk. Well, Reverend, how 
preacher has preached out of his heart. And the reason he preached like he preached, he wants somebody who does not know Jesus in the pardon of their sins to ask that question, what must I do to be saved? The Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God rose him from the grave, you shall be saved. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe, I'm glad I'm whosoever. Whosoever believe shall have everlasting life. If you are here tonight and you are part of the whosoever, we ask you to come. As we're standing to our feet. Listen, Savior. If there be one. I surrender all. You can come. the house is saved but in today's technology there may be somebody on Facebook watching by Facebook and we just want them to know that if you believe in your heart and confess from your mouth you shall be saved Father God we pray that the word that has went forth falls on good soil we pray that it will come in a season of harvest because we know that the word teaches us that the harvest is plentiful but the labors are few. So tonight we pray for increase for laborers. We pray for increase for believers and we pray for a blessing upon this man of God that has preached to the people of God so that the God that we serve will be glorified and the devil horrified in Jesus name everyone in agreement said amen can stand and receive the bishop of this house, Pastor Jerry Lee Sorrells. Amen. Give him a hand as he comes. There's still a hallelujah in the house, huh? Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Lake Lady and myself is just cheesing. Uh, we just, we have enjoyed ourselves. And after 22 years, uh, uh, I should be real good at closing us out. Amen. Getting us home. Amen. You know, wives have to put up with a lot. 
especially with a pastor. And she didn't want to put up with it all, but she made all the necessary adjustments. And because of your strong prayer life, and even more so, your love for me, here we are, more than conquerors, because God is with us, and he always will be with us. And I'm so happy to be with you. Good afternoon, everybody. I appreciate this man right here. He's my honey, my husband, my bishop, my confidant. My, my, my knees was getting weak. The man with the hammer, with the ladder, he do it all. Thank you, Pastor. Love you. I love you, too. I want to speak to my people now. To the first ladies, I love you. A lot of times, we get pushed back. And being a first lady, I can speak on that. Because from now on, whenever a first lady comes to Greater Holy St. John, she will be appreciated, just like the men. Because we need that. We need encouraging to keep going. <laughs> to my sisters, I had sisters from Fontana, from San Diego, from LA, some of y'all leave. But you know what? Just to see you in the house today, it really chokes me up because last year, Daddy was here. And for you guys to come and support your sister, it really means a lot. It really means a lot. I thank you for coming. Uh, my sister, Miss Sue, this is my friend from the neighborhood. The Bible says, love your neighbor. I love you, Miss Sue. And Mr. B, you are right. <laughs> to the greater Holy St. John family, I know this couldn't have happened without you. And I thank you all. I love you all. We'll be here next year this time. Maybe not on the same day, but come and visit us and celebrate with us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we ready. We ready to go down from here now. I don't smell greens no more, but hurry me get back there. Amen. Most dear gracious Father, we ask you to bless the food that was prepared for us, Lord. Continue to bless the cooks and all that have played part in the food, Lord. Continue to bless them in a special way. Continue to let a special anointing shine on every pastor under the sound of my weak voice. Lord, bless each and every one of us here present today in a special way. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest with the Bible with his hands forth and evermore, and the redeemed of the Lord, saying, Amen. Amen. God bless you and keep you as I pray.